Hi guys, so today for vlog number two, I'll be talking about the jazz singer and the life of Yogananda, like everybody else. So, uh, starting with the jazz singer, the main character is named Jackie Rabinowitz, and he is Jewish and he comes from a long line of cantors, which are basically like, um, they sing uh, for religious purposes in the synagogues uh, for for like Jewish um, religious like gatherings and like, and like, uh, proceedings and stuff and his dad wants him to become a cantor because his dad was a cantor and the, his dad's dad and his dad's dad's dad and so on and so on so uh, Jackie doesn't want to become a cantor he's really into music and he uh, really likes jazz music so one day he's singing jazz music and his dad catches him which for his dad this is like a huge no-no because his dad is uh, f his dad firmly believes that music should only be used for religious purposes like during um like a sermon or during like the bar mitzvahs or any of like the religious uh any of the religious like rituals that they uh, practice in judaism uh jackie's father believes that music should only be reserved for that and not for entertainment or anything else like that and this obviously um upsets jackie because he loves music and he wants to pursue it so this causes Jackie to run away and change his name to Jack Robin and uh, pursue a career in music because his dad won't let him, if he's at home, he wants him to become a cantor. So he um, completely leaves his, he abandons his old life and becomes uh, Jack Robin and he lands a part in the musical April Follies. So um, because he was able to like secure work and like be semi-successful, in the music entertainment field he returns back home to try and uh win the approval of his parents to like you know prove to them that music doesn't only have to be religious and that he he can make a career out of the thing that he loves but this makes his dad even more angry and his dad ends up banishing him from the family so he's like completely he has to leave now he can never return like like he doesn't want anything to do with him so when when Jackie is supposed to go to the opening night of April Follies, uh, he discovers that his father is very sick and he can't make it to his uh, to the to to the religious uh, ceremony that he's supposed to be singing at because he's the cantor. So uh, Jackie has to make a choice. He can either um, perform in the opening night for his play that he's worked very hard to get into, or he could fill in for, he can fill in as Cantor for his dad because he's in the hospital and he's unable to uh, sing. So Jackie makes a difficult choice and he decides to uh, replace his father and uh, sing as a Cantor. And this makes his father very happy. And um, on, on his father's deathbed, uh, he finally accepts him back into the family and accepts him as his son. But unfortunately, he uh, he passes away. So there's a lot of um, myth and ritual elements in this movie. Obviously, um, one of the main center points of the entire movie is Judaism. And anytime that there's uh, anything religious like that in the movie, it's one of the most prevalent um, most prevalent instances of myth because the entire characterization and the relationship. Uh, and the central conflict between Jackie and his father that completely revolves around Judaism and all the myths and the rituals that surround uh, the religion. As far as rituals go, um, becoming a cantor is sort of a ritualistic duty that one would have to undertake in the in Judaism. So you would sing for um, for all like the like the the synagogue sessions that you went for and for anything that required sort of religious music the cantor would be present so in a way uh jackie's dad would always be like um participating in a ritual and jackie himself at the end of the movie when he decides to sing in place of his father um those are like the those are like the myth and ritual elements in the jazz singer now moving on to the life of Yogananda, this one is uh, less a movie. It's not really like a movie; it's a documentary, and it follows the life of a man named Yogananda from India. So ever since he was a young boy, um, it was foretold that Yogananda would be an excellent teacher when he grew up, and um, he even had visions of of opening a yoga school and in the future they, those visions came to fruition he did open a school a yoga school in India and he taught uh, people about 
the practice of yoga and how it unifies uh, the body and the, and the mind. You know, the word yoga literally means like unify in Sanskrit. So he has, uh, there's another vision that he has and that's of going to America to spread his teachings about yoga, which it also comes true. He moves to Boston and he uh, starts giving lectures about yoga and the benefits that it has between uh, your your well-being and your spiritual health and like your mental health and things like that. He starts giving those presentations in Boston to thousands and thousands of people. But in order to sort of um, modify his teachings for a Western audience, he retrofits all of his presentations to present the benefits and the effects and the ritual of yoga as a sort of scientific discovery. Like he presents it as if it was a study that had been conducted to discover the, the benefits of yoga. And this um, is more, the Western audience, as opposed to the Eastern audience in India, is more receptive of this um, scientific approach. So um, the myth and ritual that is present throughout this movie is just like the jazz singer, um, Hinduism and yoga, which are both ritualistic and mythical aspects of Indian culture, are very prevalent throughout this movie. So one of the mythical elements is that the visions that Yogananda keeps happening, they keep coming true. So he had a vision of, of teaching people yoga, and when he was older he opened a, a yoga school in India. And then he had visions of traveling to America to spread his teachings, and that vision also came true. And he also has a vision of his mother dying and shortly after the vision happened, it came true. So that's one of the mythical elements in the film. Another ritualistic element would be just yoga itself as, as a concept and uh, Yogananda's teachings of yoga. <clears throat> so yoga has religious origins and um, very heavy connections and very deep connections to Hinduism in that it's sort of a... Uh, a process where you become one within yourself and you become one within the environment around you so that like there's no separation between uh, the world and yourself so throughout uh, through teaching through explaining these teachings to Americans and to also those in India um, that's the sort of ritualistic aspect of yoga and the impact that it has played in the Hindu culture and history is explored there so that was uh, The Jazz Singer and the Life of Yogananda. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the next vlog. See ya.